Hey everyone, I want to show you this uh, great new service that's been created. It's currently beta testing, uh, but I've been getting some questions about how to use it and how to use JS Psych with it. So this is actually a service called Cognition.run, and it's built uh, specifically to run JS Psych experiments. And it's got uh, a really simple to use uh, user interface. And uh, amazingly, it's it's free. Uh, so you can you can just use this to host your experiments and not worry about any of the the backend server side setup stuff, databases, all of that, it's all taken care of for you here. And this just gives you sort of a pure way to work with JS Psych uh, and, and host your experiments online. So if you haven't uh, started using the service yet, you'd have to create an account. Uh, you can do that with the uh, create account button. And I've already got one, so I'm just gonna click go to tasks, which will take me to the, the tasks that uh, I can create. So I don't actually have any here. I deleted the, the one I was working with before to show you what it would look like when it was brand new. So you just click this new task button up here in the top left corner, or you can choose these example tasks. So they've actually imported the, the two main tutorials that are on the JS Psych website, and also um, some other tasks that show you how to redirect a participant and um, exit and entering full screen and demographic questions. But we'll go ahead and create a, a new task just to show you what it looks like. I'm just gonna call this a demo task. Uh, if you click the advanced configuration, if you're running your task in the language other than English, you can select that here. This just, I think, gives the correct meta tags uh, for the browser so that they the browser uh, renders the page correctly. And I'm gonna hit save. So it gives you a link immediately. So this is the link that you would send to your participants. Uh, but of course, first you have to design your task. So uh, the place to do that is in the source code button right here. So you click this. And this actually just gives you a, um, a really nice code editor. So you can just work with JS Psych right here in this code editor. And then it over here on the right, it will preview things for you. And actually even uh, even better here is that down in the bottom, it will show you the data that are, that's being recorded from the task uh, as you, as you uh, interact with the task up here in the top right. JS Psych is already loaded by default. You can choose uh, which version you're using. If you wanted to use 6.0.5 for some reason, you could do that, but you can use 6.1. Um, and one thing that's different about using cognition.run uh, from a normal JS Psych experiment is that you don't need any of the HTML uh, code. So we're not gonna do the, you know, the doc type. Um, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna load the scripts. Um, that's all gonna happen automatically for you. This is just JavaScript. So just to show you what that looks like, I'm gonna recreate a really simple example here. So I'm gonna create um, just a single trial and I'm going to use the HTML uh, button response plugin to do that. And I need a stimulus. So I will just say um, demo task uh, and whoops, comma there. And I need the choices, so um, hello and goodbye. <laughs> uh, okay, so I've, I've defined my, my trial object here. Um, and then all I need to do now is uh, have the timeline and initialize JS Psych. So I'm gonna do JS Psych init. I'm just gonna do my timeline um, right, right here because it's such a simple timeline for this demo, like this. Um, and so what happens is it, it actually detects immediately that this is this is code that can run and immediately my task pops up over here on the right uh, and I can I can interact with it as I would uh, a normal website and I can click one of the two buttons so I'll click this one and you can see here's the here's the data that got recorded um, right at the bottom you can even download it or you can clear it to reset it um, and if you just to show you one more thing, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of depth about you know writing uh, experiments here because you can you can basically just take any experiment and and paste the JavaScript code right in here that you already have, or you can um, of course do your editing right here directly because it is a nice code editor that's built in with this beautiful preview option. I just want to show you that there's also this uh, these options over here on the left to upload stimuli and to upload external JavaScript or CSS files. So if you have custom CSS or if you have custom JavaScript that are like external libraries, like say you're working with um, svg.js, which is a library for rendering uh, SVG graphics, then you could, you could load that in here. Um, but if you have stimuli like images that you wanna load, I'll just show you very quickly how that works. So I'm just gonna um, pick one of the images from the, uh, the JS Psych examples folder here. 
and it'll upload it. And then um, I will uh, use that in my HTML button response here. So I'll do image source uh, blue.png. Okay. And see here it is over here um, because I've got the path name. I just use that same path name in the image here and the image renders over here and I can click the button and we're good to go. So then if you wanted to, uh, to send this task to somebody, uh, I'm gonna go back here, you could just send them this link. So I'm just gonna open this link right here in a new tab and there's my task. Uh, and you could, uh, well, if I pop, I'll probably delete this, but you could go to this URL and uh, you'd be able to see the task. And um, if I complete the task here, so let me click the button. Uh, so the task is done and I go back to this and I refresh, you'll see, oh, here's the first person who completed it. Um, I can view their, their run. So here's all of their data. I can download a JSON file with their data. Uh, I can see some extra information. So uh, cognition.run automatically records some information that JS Psych doesn't record by default, like the user's IP address, the user agent string, and it parses that user agent string into what browser they were using and what platform and, and so on. Uh, and then here's all the normal JS Psych stuff at the start. And then I think you can uh, click these buttons here to download all of the participants at once. Uh, I, I wanna show you one more great thing about this, which is how simple it would be to integrate this with a, with a service like Prolific. So uh, I'm gonna go back to the source code here. And um, one of the things that I noticed in the interface is that you have this option here to add URL parameters, which just gives you the, these are the kinds of things you might see in like if you're using Mechanical Turk, like a hit ID and a subject ID. Um, but Prolific also will generate these URL parameters and URL parameters are just a way for a website when it's sending a URL to encode some extra uh, variables or some extra values. Uh, and they usually get appended onto the end of the URL. So if you ever see a URL with like a question mark at the end and then some, some things that look like this with equal signs and ampersands, uh, those are basically variables that are being included in the URL string so that the page knows what to do once it's loaded. And here, um, one of the nice things that cognition.run does is it actually automatically records any URL parameters into the data. So if I type, um, say, subject uh, ID equals one, two in here, and I, uh, I run my task, then if you scroll over into the data, I don't even need to scroll, it's right here. In the data, you'll see subject ID equals 12. So it's taken this variable here. And the way that that would work in the, the task itself is if you uh, if you did this, you put the question mark and you did subject ID equals one, two, three, four, um, then that URL variable will be included. And I think if I go back to the data here, oh, it's unfinished. You can even see it's running. I didn't know that, that's, that's amazing. Um, I can click goodbye. Now the task is done. Uh, I'm gonna refresh this page and we can view this. And here you can see right in my uh, data, because I had that URL parameter, I've got the subject ID one, two, three, four right there. Why is this great? Well, prolific, if you're using prolific to host online experiments and, and recruit subjects, um, prolific has an option to automatically include the subject ID and the session ID uh, as URL parameters in their setup. So here I'm in my prolific account and this is a brand new study and this would be the place where you would put the link to the study. So if I was using cognition.run, I would copy this first part of the link here and I would stick it right there. Um, and then um, you would click this show advanced button and you, it'll ask, would you like us to include special parameters such as participant ID in your study URL? And you could say yes. Uh, and then you could accept the default options here. This is sort of the, na the variable name that will show up. So it's prolific PID in capital letters. You can click add and you can see what it will do now is the URL has expanded. So we've got that question mark and we've got a bunch of variables at the end. And now if somebody's completing your study from prolific, um, you will automatically get their prolific ID in your, in your data set, um, which is great. Uh, you, you're able to see who completed the task. And in fact, prolific, I think in their, in their terms, they, they ask you to verify that this is something that you've done that you've gotten people's IDs somehow. So this makes it really easy to do that. 
Um, the last thing you would have to do if you're using prolific is at the very end, you need to send them back to this URL here. So if you uh, copy that URL and I go to my, uh, my let's see, my task here, I'm gonna go back to the source code. Um, one way that you could do this is just by adding um, uh, like a, a, la a trial right at the end. Uh, maybe I'll use, let's see, um, uh, let's use HTML keyboard response. And we can say the stimulus is um, thanks for completing my experiment. Um, and, um, and then you can use a, a link tag. There's other ways to do this too. You could set it up so that it just automatically redirects. Um, I like doing it this way because uh, you can put it on the debrief screen if you have one. So I'm going to do uh, a link tag, which is the A tag. And the, the link that I'll send people to is that completion string on prolific. Uh, and let's say click here to uh, return to prolific and complete the study. Okay. And one last thing that I like to do when I set this up on prolific is I like to use the HTML keyboard response plugin because then you can set the, uh, the choices option to jspsych.no keys. And this means that participants can't accidentally leave this screen. Um, so sometimes if you, if you have it set up on like a, a screen where people can advance, they might advance past the URL and then they won't be able to go back and they won't be able to uh, submit their, their, uh, their task and, and get credit for it in the normal way. So now I can preview this, I can click Hello. Um, oh, I didn't add it to the timeline, of course. So let me just add debrief uh, to the timeline. Okay. And I'll click hello. Uh, and then I get this message and I can click here. Um, oh, and I guess you can't preview it through here, but I think if I go, if I go back to this window over here and refresh, hello, click this and uh, I'll leave. And there you go. Um, and it, and prolific will say, oh, submission would be, would, would have worked if it, if it needed to. So there's a quick overview of cognition.run. Um, it's an amazing service. Thanks so much to the developers who worked on creating it. I think it's going to be an amazing thing for the JS site community. Uh, hope that you all, uh, take advantage of it. And, uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to, uh, ask those in our online experiments forum or on the JS site discussion group until there's a, a more standardized place for the cognition.run folks, uh, who are going to be getting lots of support requests, I, I expect. Okay, take care. Bye.